So it's time to share another painting project. Recently, I picked up the Centurion Marshall. And uh, I've, I've always kind of been a big fan of Warcry. I've gotten most of the box sets. Unfor unfortunately, I missed Catacombs because I, uh, I had other stuff going on. Um, I'd love to pick up a box at some point if I can find one. But anyway, so I picked up Heart of Gur. And I definitely, most definitely, had to pick up a copy of the, uh, as you can see in the background there, the Legionnaires and the Centurion Marshal, because I really, really like the way that they all look. So this is just kind of like a quick overview of how I'm going to paint the Centurion Marshal, how I'm going to make everything look, just kind of like a, a brief you know, just paint scheme. And I, I'm, I'm not going for crazy quality here, but I do kind of want it to look a little bit better than, than just regular tabletop quality. So what I started off with here is Reaper's Ebony Brown. And as you can see, I'm still kind of struggling with my camera angles here. And I, I promise you, I'll get it worked out at some point soon, I swear. So starting off, um, now, as you'll notice, I did prime it in black. And I used my airbrush to put the metallic bits on, and that was uh, Vallejo's um, aluminum. So that's why that's how I got the you know the um, the metallics all shiny as I used Vallejo. It, honestly, it's it's really if you want a really shiny shiny like nice looking metal, definitely Vallejo aluminum. The the Vallejo metals are really good, especially if you have an airbrush and you can kind of squeak it through the airbrush. So on top of the black. I airbrushed the metallics and now I am hitting the horse body itself of the Centaur with um, the Reaper Ebony Brown. And uh, that's con just going to be stage one before I start layering. to step two for the flesh I went with Bugman's Glow and that's this is just again this is just my base coat and I'm gonna layer it up from there so um, as you can see I'm just kind of trying to be as careful as possible so I get as few areas as possible uh, marked up with the Bugman's Glow there are a couple of there's a couple of areas in here where you kind of have to squeak the brush in and, and just do what you can. But for the most part, this model was a real pleasure to paint because the the details are big enough to where you know you can get the brush in and out without having too hard of a time, um, you know, getting the color in the right spots. And unfortunately, as you can see, there is a little bit of potato here with my camera because I am I am still trying to work out this whole camera angle thing and um, the uh, so one thing to keep in mind he I, now you can sub assembly this but I kind of wanted to put everything together just to show everyone that yes you, you can paint this even when it is not uh, done via sub assembly so you know his arms are spread out enough and his pose is is just about right to where you can get into most of the nooks and the crannies without much of a of, of a hard time
So even for that little bit of painting, it already looks really good. But we're going to make sure that we do, you know, the, the various areas. As you see, I'm pointing out a couple of areas that are a little harder to get to. Uh, things you might want to keep in mind as you're, as you're painting. There's, there's a couple of areas where you have to uh, kind of push the brush into the, into the recesses. So moving on to the next step, uh, I moved on to Mornfang Brown. And I mixed that into the, uh, the Reaper Oh, no, I'm sorry. In, on this step, this is just me doing the um, the leather bands and all that. But what I did do is when I moved back on to the body, I actually used Mornfang with the Reaper Brown, the, the Ebony Brown, to start lightening it up and do a couple of layers. But as you can see, this step is plain and simple. I'm just putting Mornfang on the leather straps. All right, so um, I actually went on here and I went back and I put the uh, black over top of the various brown areas that I'd gotten over on the feathers that are on, on his legs. And that that's an equestrian term there. It's a, it's a term for horses with the little hairs on their legs that they're called feathers of all things. Uh, so kind of marking that back up to black later on I'm going to go back and I'm going to throw a little bit of dark gray and then lighter gray on there I'm just going to kind of layer it up and then after that I'm going to uh, darken it up with a wash and man you know I once again I'm still trying to get this whole camera thing down I, I think that I am going to have to figure something else out for for the way that I have my camera mounted on my desk because it as you can see, I'm, I'm kind of struggling with uh, trying to get everything properly put together. Now, you've already seen me, if you watch my videos, uh, getting that gold the, the, where I did my Thousand Suns. So I'm not going to go back over there, but this is ret Retributor Armor. It's the same gold that I used for my Thousand Suns. And it, it's fairly simple. You don't need to really be worried about the gold. Just throw it on there. It, it's, it's intimidating to some people, to, but the, you know, the sooner you throw it on there, the better you get. Uh, here I am using Reaper's Balathian Chitin to do the horns. And uh, Balathian Chitin, like the Ebony Brown, is a Reaper color that I always seem to go back to. And of course, if I can get my get my stupid fat hands out of the out of the shot here, I might actually get some good shots of me painting. I I apologize to all of you viewers that are that are watching this. I you know I'm um, my new camera is uh, is a little bit fickle. So anyway, I put the Balathian chitin on all of the skeletons or the skull the skull pieces, uh, any bones and all that. And I also used it on the wrap on the spear and the wrap on the uh, mace. This is an attempt for me to use more army painter colors. And honestly, I did not like it. Not one bit. I'm having a real hard time with my army painter paints. I can't seem to get them to to properly coat anything. So I went back with the old, you know, the old standby Balathian chitin to do the net. Now the net is kind of the only piece on this model that was a serious pain in the ass. And you can see why as I'm sitting there and uh, painting each individual strand of the net. But honestly, once you get the net base coated like this and one thing to keep in mind, I didn't show it, but I am using two thin coats on this stuff. Two thin coats. That's the best way to get a smooth finish. Uh, the exception is the net. I kind of just wanted to slap it on there and be done with the net because it was it was really uh, uh, the, this was the most unfun part of it. It was was ruining a brush trying to get into all those little crevices and crannies trying to get the the, the cover up the black primer that was on there. So moving on to the reds. I started with corn red, 
and corn red went on the tassel on the helmet and I also used corn red on the scars now initially initially I had thought when I was looking at his back that he was wearing some sort of weird tabard and I was like wait that doesn't that's not right and I got to looking at the at the box and at the model and it's it's a scar it's it's a mark of chaos on him but it, it's covered up by the armor and the straps and everything else on him but it, it's it's kind of neat that it's on there it, I, I kind of like the uh, I, I like the aesthetics of it um, for the hair it was kind of a pain in the butt trying to get to the underside of the hair but it was again still doable this is me unapologetically getting my face and my hand into the shot just because I was trying to not get the red all over the skin that I had just double coated. This of course goes against my usual MO. I usually will go in and I will make sure to do the lowest spots first so I don't end up getting anything on the next highest level. So I would usually do the red first and then afterward I would do the skin. But for some reason, I decided to do the scar after the skin. Not sure why. So uh, that takes a few minutes. But it's, it's you know, again, even with that mistake, it's not so bad. So moving on, this is my first attempt at using an Army Painter wash. So this is the flesh wash. It's not so bad. Honestly, if, if I had to go back, I would probably use a Games Workshop wash instead. I'm... To this point, I'm actually not very impressed with the Army Painter paints. I don't know if I'm doing something wrong, but even shaking the crap out of my paints, they don't seem to... Uh, they seem to kind of separate a little more than they should. So, moving on here, this is me doing the excess parts and pieces of the horse. I'm, I'm actually... Uh, I've gone back and mixed a little Mornfang into that ebony brown and I'm doing different layers on the horse. Now what I'm going to do here is it's a technique that you've probably seen everywhere on YouTube if you watch YouTube videos. You do a large part which in this case I painted the whole thing ebony brown. Then you do a slightly smaller part with a slightly different color something a little lighter which is the Mornfang and the ebony mixed together and then you just keep doing lighter colors on the raised areas and this is just it's just layering the different colors so I am layering all of these browns together and leaving that ebony brown in just the recesses here and even though it looks really really bright and poppy it actually takes a couple of coats to get this you know get this done but the area is big enough on this guy that you're not gonna have any problems doing it trust me it's it's worth the time to do this in stages and to do the uh, the his skin or the actually it's it would be fur at this point but uh, to do the fur in stages and in layers and just kind of layer up that lighter color on the raised areas like I, as you can see there I'm skipping over the the recesses in the muscles and I'm going in and I'm doing the higher areas with that mixed color and as I go on, I mix a little bit more of that Mornfang brown into the paint and do just a little bit more of a uh, of, of smaller area as I go or the more raised areas as I go, depending on how I'm doing it. And this is kind of a progress shot. You can see where I have done several different coats of the Mornfang. And actually what I did on top of that is I came back with that Mornfang brown and I actually just stippled a little bit of the brown on some of the higher areas to give it kind of a, a texture feel to it. Now here in this step I'm going back with just the Bugman's Glow after I put on that flesh wash and what that does is that actually lightens up the uh, the flesh tone back to the original color but I'm leaving again just like layering everything else I'm leaving the recesses with that dark flesh wash to make everything else pop
All right, so at this stage, I am mixing that Cadian Flesh with a little bit of the Bugman's Glow, and I'm doing a another layer. And I go back and layer this again with Keslev Flesh as well. And so uh, again, just like the fur on his centaur body on the horse part of the model, I am doing a smaller area with the lighter color. Now I'm also, I, I kind of, at, at first I kind of wanted him to be kind of sickly and pale, but then I thought, well, no, how about I, ju I just leave, you know, the, the flesh looking relatively normal. So I decided just to go ahead and, and go relatively normal looking instead of making it all, all pale and sickly looking. So moving through the different layers here, as you can see, I'm picking out the higher places on the muscles to do the, uh, you know, to do the, the, the flesh. Um, I moved on here to, as you can see, add Agrax Earthshade to uh, shade up the net. And um, I, I actually went back later and I used Agrax on the centaur areas. So we'll, we'll see that here in just a second. Um, so for the next stage, I went back to the Scar with Kislev Flesh and Mephestin Red. And again, just like layering everything else, I'm doing a smaller area within the scar, leaving that dark red on the edges to kind of make it sort of look realistic. Now at this point, I also did a bit of an edge highlight on the hair as well, and just to kind of lighten things up and make it kind of pop a little bit, a little bit better. Um, the only thing that I didn't like about this model, I wouldn't say I don't like it, the face is fine. I like the helmet. It's kind of neat, but I, I kind of feel like it's a little much. But, you know, I mean, it, it still fit, it fits the aesthetic. It does fit the aesthetic. So as you can see here, um, this is me using the Nuln Oil on all of the metal parts. Now, I was originally going to go back and do um, on the gold. Uh, I was going to put a um, the uh, gloss Reichland flesh shade to make it kind of a burnished gold color. But in the end, I decided to just leave the gold and the metallics, the silvery metallics of the same, with, with the same wash and the same color scheme. So as not, and, and what this does, not only does it eliminate a step, but it kind of pulls the colors of the model together a little bit better than it would than if I had done it the other way. I promise I will get better focus on my next video, I swear. Um, so this, in this step, I went back with the plate mail metal from uh, Army Painter, and I'm just doing the various rivets on the belts. Uh, this, is, this step is not really necessary, but I felt like I needed a little more detail on the belts anyway, and I, I, I did go back eventually and, and do another couple of layers of different colors of brown as well. To kind of make them a little different but i decided to go ahead and take that that plate mail and do just a couple of different areas on the armor just to make a couple of the 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 higher areas stand out do a couple of a little bit of an edge highlight as well um so carbon gray i took carbon gray and uh, I've been, I also lightened it up with a, another couple of grays as well. Um, Ancient Bark, I believe, is one of the ones I used. So I'm using that to do the very, like the, the raised edges of the feathers and the hairs underneath, just to kind of make them stand out a little bit better. And then I go back later and I do a Nuln Oil over top of it to pull all of those colors together. Now I did use the carbon gray a little bit liberally because I knew that the um, 
the known oil wash would darken everything down so it is a little bit lighter than you would expect it to be but it all gets pulled back together after you put the known oil wash over top of everything so the the wash kind of puts everything into its own little category there and pulls everything back together um, this again is me using a lighter color this is carbon gray along with the um, ancient bark just a, like a dab of ancient bark and both of those are uh, reaper colors so uh, th this is at this at this point it's all reaper and generally i kind of use a mix of reaper and games workshop in most of what i do a little bit of vallejo um, i don't have anybody local that sells vallejo paints so that's something i have to order usually my local store pretty much only carries uh, Games Workshop paints, and the other one carries a couple of game work Games Workshop paints and a bunch of Army Painter paints. And like I said, I'm not having a really good, um, I'm not having good luck with the Army Painter stuff. So I kind of have been sticking to my Reaper and everything else. Um, this, as you can see, if you look really hard on the scar as well, I went back with the Kessel of Flesh and did a very small circle of white around the scar to kind of make it look like it's uh, infected a little bit. And here I'm going back with a little bit of Mourn Fang and I'm just doing some, uh, just kind of like a, it's not really a stippling, but it kind of is a stippling across all of the belts just to kind of make them look worn like they, like he's been using these things for a while. Anyway, so that's kind of a, a like a brief overview of how I painted the Centurion Marshall. And uh, here is a full look at the final product. I really like this model. I like how it painted up. It was big enough to where I could, you know, put my big meaty hands on it and, and be able to paint it without much of an issue. And um, I enjoyed myself. So if you like what you see, please like and subscribe, hit the bell button, and thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it.